welcome to season 7 episode 10 of the Ubuntu podcast. In this episode we'll interview Martin Wimpress hey, and we'll read your feedback. If you're listening live uh, we you can send messages to us using the chat thing on the website and in the hash UPC IRC channel. I'm Laura and with me are Mark. Hiya. Alan. Hello. And Tony. Good evening. How are you all? Great. Yeah, fantastic. Not bad, not bad. Yeah. What have you been up to, Mark? I have been working on a secret project. Which Ooh, tell I... us about it. How ah. very first book of you. Yes, I, I will, I'm sure I'll, I'll tell you more in the coming weeks, but not, not just now. But one thing I can tell you about... You tease. Yeah. See what I mean? First book status. <laughs> one thing I can tell you about is something I've been doing at work called the Semester of Code, which may sound familiar. <laughs> yes. Kind of like the Summer of Code. But not. But it's a semester of code. The difference is that instead of doing it over the summer for money, you do it as part of your course for credit. So uh, um, cheaper. Uh, yes, kind of. But also it means you can carry on working yeah, during the summer. And yeah. You're not interrupting your work. Yeah, and also it means that you, yeah you can also you know get credit credit like recognition from your mm, degree sweet. course mm. for doing. So um, essentially, we are hoping to run this in the next academic year. It's. Yeah, a group of universities and companies from around Europe who are arranging this. And we're currently looking for um, open source projects who are looking for contributors and can offer um, some sort of mentored um, projects for first time contributors to sign up. So if you are interested, if you go over to semesterofcode.com and have a look there, um, there's an FAQ about it and you can get in touch with us and we'll sign you up to the mailing list. Cool. Ooh. Yes. Mm. Well, Alan, how about you then? <laughs> Sorry, I drifted off. <laughs> <laughs> wow. No, Mark, it Poor was Mark. really interesting. Yeah, it was. <laughs> I did, I, no, I was interested. That's the problem. Um, I was spent the last week in Malta uh, at a sprint with uh, loads of people, community team uh, and uh, designers and SDK people oh, not, working not on the phone. Sorry? <laughs> What? You Can you imagine you that? Running. No, not that kind of sprint. <laughs> the kind of sprint where you sit down in a room and work. Oh, right, right. right. And um, we invited some community people uh, uh-huh. along to uh, come along and sprint with us. And it was really brilliant. They were a great bunch and they worked really professionally for, for the week. And, uh, so yeah, was, was really that good. like UDS then? Kind of, well, not really, because it was an internal sprint for employees. Um, and community people. Uh, but we invited a few community people to come along to, you know, work on their app and get through some of the uh, oh, bug, right. outstanding okay. bugs in the apps so it was more development it wasn't like presentations and yes. stuff it was sitting around Focus tables work, and working exactly. but having having like the designers in the next room yeah. and the sdk oh, people cool. in another room and online services people in another room it meant, it meant you could you could get a lot done in a, in a short mm. period of time it was really good and they're a really nice bunch of guys is there anything you can tell us about that uh, yeah, we um, the design team presented a new design for the clock app on the phone and uh, Necklesh, who's the main clock developer, was mm-hmm. there. Um, and, um, yeah, it was really nice to see the the presentation with the animations and the new styling and everything. And, uh, Did yeah, we speak to Necklesh was, at some point? We have interviewed him yeah, in the yeah, past. We yeah, we interviewed him recently. And, um, yeah, it was really quite exciting. I could see his head spinning as he was thinking of how he's going to implement all these, <laughs> all these new things. But, yeah, it's quite exciting. Cool. It's mm. Tony? Um, I'm still growing a beard. We noticed. Um, it's going quite well. <laughs> oh, is that what that is? That is. It's, I know it's, you know. Well. Well? Well. Okay, right, yes. Do you, what do you think, Mark? Oh, well, it's going. <laughs> Ow. And um, I've had some more donations from lovely listeners and uh, people from the open source community for my Malawi mission. Mm-hmm. Um, are, you going to, are you going to Malawi? Yeah, I'll tell you what, should we put well, a link? Why have you never mentioned that before? We should put a link in the show notes, shouldn't should we? Is there a wedding um, over there that you're first <laughs> he's taking his camera just in case but yeah so thanks to everybody who's donated I think at the time of recording this live I am £70 away from the target Ooh, wow so I've had some... let's see if we can we can get get there before we release this show yeah go absolutely. on listeners in the IRC channel yes absolutely <laughs> I've probably donated that, a million that, times <laughs> already is that including gift aid uh, no no I've got to reach the target without gift aid will that be two right okay podcast recordings that you want me here for uh, yes, Uh-oh. probably yes. <laughs> <laughs> we should start thinking about that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yes. How about you, Laura? Uh, oh, I've been moving my email and web hosting, and okay. getting my head around changing DNS server, no name servers, and oh, uh, yeah. 
and That's and fun. stuff. Trying out Horde, which I'd never heard the of before. Weird male web male thing. Yeah, yeah. All the right features, not necessarily in the right order. <laughs> <laughs> Very odd. Where were you running on a VPS or something? Or uh, Kluke.info. Kluke. What's Kluke? Kluke. Is that your accent, or is it really, <laughs> it is, is it really spelt like that? It's spelt like that. And it is actually based in Preston, so I felt <laughs> like really I was is. supporting local businesses, sort of. <laughs> you don't live in Preston. I was looking, <laughs> I was looking for a UK-based host, right. and I felt that Preston was as local as I could get, in a way, <laughs> from Hampshire. <laughs> your logic is impeccable. <laughs> <laughs> it's the new up-and-coming IT area, Preston. Oh right, mm. they yeah. got a, a uh, like a coal coal roundabout, have they? Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> they have a silicon triangle, but it's actually just a very small piece of silicon that's on the floor. <laughs> fell out of somebody's phone. Oh, now you're We're just being get mean. Yes, we are. <laughs> they, they do have dial-up there. Let's be fair. Preston, okay, <laughs> Preston in itself isn't great, but it's good to have a oh, northwest thing. Now the truth comes out. <laughs> I'm looking for a northwest one. That's fine. Okay. Anyway, they're very good. I had it recommended by a friend, and it's yes. Awesome. Ooh. Excellent. Well, good luck with that. Thank you. Should we listen to Martin Wimpress? Let's do that. Come in, Martin. On the line now, we have Martin Wimpress from the Marte desktop team. Hello, Martin. How are you? Hello. I'm very well, thank you. Good. So I guess the first thing uh, to ask is, what is Mate? Uh, well, Mate is the continuation of the GNOME 2 desktop. Okay, so some time ago, the GNOME team moved on to GNOME 3 and with that GNOME shell, and some people wanted a GNOME 2 variant. So is that is that really where it was born from? Yeah, so what happened was there was actually an, an Arch Linux user called Perbros from, I think, Argentina, and uh, he decided that he wanted GNOME 2 back. So he uh, he forked everything that was GNOME 2, including all of the underlying libraries. And he wrote a, um, a migration script, which was a colossal sed hack, which went through <laughs> each of the uh, libraries and did a, a global sort of replacement of, of names, library references, and Marte was born. Wow. So that's wow. where it all starts. That's it's all you some, have to some, do to fork something these days. Yeah, <laughs> global search and replace, and you're done. Yeah, and and so that's where it was, and it was it was a it was a huge hack, and um, the, and the name change was required so that it didn't uh, conflict with uh, GNOME. So uh, right, so you yes, could it, you could potentially have both installed at the same time. Yes, or you could choose to install some components from Marte alongside some from GNOME. So that's why the the name change happened. But the fork was huge because it was everything um, rather than trying to reuse uh, anything from the GNOME project. What are the main things that people look for and that meant Mate is worth doing in that respect? Um, I think for the majority of the Mate users, they're, they're looking for the traditional desktop experience that they're familiar with, that they like, that works for them, uh, a workflow that they, they like. And... Uh, in that group, you also get some uh, hardcore uh, Compiz fans who uh, who still want you know wobbly windows and rotating cubes. So um, I fall into the uh, category of old curmudgeon. I like it the uh, the old fashioned way. It, are you? Yeah. Well, no, not really. Actually, I did I did use uh, GNOME three for about two years before um, before I switched to Mate. Um, and when I did switch to Mate, it was like putting on a comfortable pair of slippers. And I've <laughs> stayed comfortable ever since. So when you talk about this being a fork of all of GNOME 2, it's not just the desktop, is it? It's actually a lot or all of the applications as well? Yes, quite. And, and in the early days, it was everything. It was all of the applications and all of the underlying libraries. Right. And, and, and it wasn't really a project then. It was a one-man effort. But um, since then, uh, a team has formed around it. And the um, development discipline is a bit more um, professional, let's say now. So uh, there's a real effort now to actually uh, get rid of the useless forks and realign with uh, the GNOME libraries mm -hmm. um, that are, are, are continuing to be developed upstream. So, for example, um, we've migrated from gconf to dconf. We've got things rid of things like libmate, 
Winook, which is the Windows Navigator construction kit, to just the standard upstream version, and migrated to Yelp for, for the documentation. So we're throwing out all of these useless forks and, and align, aligning again with everything that um, the GNOME team produce. Does that um, mean you'll, you'll migrate to GNOME 3 based libraries? Uh, it, yes, that's happening at the moment. So um, uh, Mate 1.8, which is the current stable release, is GTK2 only. But for some uh, iterations now in the development branch, we've been slowly adding support for GTK3. So as we, uh, and Mate 1.10, will have uh, GTK3 support and consequently if you choose to install a version of Mate which is built against GTK3 then that will pull in some of the GNOME 3 equivalents of the underlying libraries. When you said about um, it includes all the applications as well, what's the scope of applications considered part of GNOME? Okay, um, let's see if I can remember them. Uh, there's uh, now, now named uh, Marco, which is the window manager, which was mm -hmm. Metacity or Metacity, whichever way you pronounce it. <laughs> Pluma uh, is what was uh, Gedit. Uh, Kaja or Kaya is the file manager, which is what was Nautilus. Um, oh, goodness. Are these the names thing. that you guys have given them, or are these the known three upstream names? Uh, no, these are the names that were given to, in the renaming exercise that, the, that Perberos did uh, way back when, um, those are the names that he chose, right. and those are the names that we've kept. Okay. So there's, an, uh, File Roller is now in Grandpa, and uh, let's see what else is there, there's lots. But uh, everything that you will have recognized from GNOME 2 is in there, mm -hmm. it, and some of it has different names, so there's a terminal in there. But Lots but it doesn't stuff. reach as far as things like Rhythmbox or the web browser Epiphany. No, mm -hmm. no. So uh, haven't done uh, anything like that. It's just what you'd consider the core desktop applications. So are those those applications like Epiphany or or um, or um, Web or whatever it's called today, and Rhythmbox, aren't they built against GTK three now? So they are. So if you're running Mate, which is one point eight, built against uh, GNOME 2 libraries, you're, mm -hmm. you're going to have GNOME 3 applications on GNOME 2 and that all works fine? It does. So, yes. Uh, there's a couple of things to answer there. So, some applications which aren't uh, maintained by the core Mate development team are um, have been adopted by members of the Mate community. So, that Palimpsest disk utility thing uh, one of the guys in the team maintains a Mate version of that, and there are other tools like that that are that, that, that sort of the extensions to what was known to that are now available for Mate. And your other question was, do things work seamlessly? Yes, they do. So one of the things that um, Mate's added is, although it's still a GTK2 uh, based um, desktop, it supports GTK3 th theming. So you can run GTK3 applications alongside the GTK2, right. uh, and it all looks uh, and works seamlessly. That, that presents some challenges with some of the recent changes in GNOME 3 with client-side decorations and things like that. But we've already put, put, put some 1.81 uh, releases out that add, uh, add initial support for client-side decorations, so, and, and that will improve in, in 1.10. But for example, I use Network Manager to configure my network, and you'd you, you wouldn't know that it was a GTK three application sitting alongside all of the GTK two stuff. Really, that's cool. So you were talking <laughs> about the, um, the there's now a, a team of a team of developers maintaining it. So where uh -huh. where do these people come from? Are they just randomly sort of congregated around the project, or are there companies involved who who use Mate? Uh, well, mostly it's uh, a group of volunteers. So there's Stefano Karapetsas. He's our lead developer. He's now in Poland, I, I think originally from Italy. Uh, Sander Swears is also one of the developers and the Gen2 maintainer. Mm -hmm. uh, Wolfgang Ulrich is a uh, Fedora maintainer. One of the developers maintains a number of the community projects and also do does the, the lion's share of the work to make sure the, the theming works and with each rev of gnome 3 or or gtk rather make sure that the theming in mate works with the newer versions of of gtk and then there's myself and probably there's probably about 10 sort of core 
contributors that contribute regularly. And then there's a larger group of about 50 or so that, that dive in from time to time. And are, they, are these people who would have contributed to Gnome 2 when it was active or and, and they came over with you or, or are these new people? Uh, well, I'm relatively new to the team, so I, I don't know all the history. But as I understand it, there are some members of what were the Gnome 2 team who still contribute to Marte. And uh, the, some of the guys I've just mentioned there are in regular contact with the current Gnome devs uh, to sort of help smooth the bumps as we encounter uh, integration issues. So you mentioned uh, Arch and Gen 2 so far. Um, mm -hmm. are, as I understand it, neither of those have default desktops. So is is Marte just one of the desktops offered in the the repository, the AUR, and and so on, or is it is it a is it something that's preferred on any on any other distros? Uh, right. Okay. Well, you asked if there are any companies involved. Um, OpenSUSE have been very supportive of the the Marte desktop team. Um, this year, they were our GSOC organizer, and with their help, we've been able to get three three GSOC students this year, uh, as opposed to one last year, which is um, a huge, mm. huge deal for us. Yeah. Uh, and I'm one of the GSOC mentors this year for, for my sins. I'm not sure how much I'm going to be able to help the poor guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, and then OpenSUSE have also just released um, an educational release of OpenSUSE for um, uh, uh, te teaching aids in um, India somewhere. So they've got a whole uh, dedicated desktop. Um, and then in terms of distros that specifically um, ship with Mate, um, the most popular one would be uh, the Linux Mint uh, flavor that comes with the Mate desktop. And, which is very popular, and is that based on packages that that uh, mint maintain in their in their repositories, or is that something that's in uh, they, upstream Debian and Ubuntu as well? Those packages actually come from uh, the Mate team. Currently, um, we have a number of uh, Debian and Ubuntu uh, unofficial repositories, and that's where those mint packages get pulled from. They then rebuild their own. Uh, there's a a tool called Automate, um, not Automate, nice. <laughs> um, that actually does uh, package building across a number of different um, Debian and Ubuntu flavors. But but um, where do those packages live? Do they either live in the repo or in PPA? They, they, they live in the Mint repositories. So um, there's been some changes recently. There's a, the, the last year's big effort was to try and get Mate into the official repositories of as many distributions as possible. Mm -hmm. So um, I got Mate into the Arch Linux official repositories rather than the AUR. And um, we've now got um, Mate 1.8 in Debian, Jesse, and SID, and it's currently queued to go into Wheezy backports. And we just missed the merge window for Trusty, but, it, but Mate 1.8 will be in 14.10. And could be backported to 14.04 once it's in 14.10. Yes. Oh, interesting. And what are, what are Mint carrying at the moment? In terms of what? A version of uh, Marty. Uh, I think they've just gone with 1.8 in, in the Mint 17 release candidate. The, re the reason I, I ask is, is it's, quite, it's quite interesting how um, the, the two main desktops that Mint use, Marte and Cinnamon being the other one, um, how, how do you think the two of them compare? Um, they're similar in that they're both a traditional metaphor. Right. Um, but Cinnamon's more fancy and whiz bang. And, <laughs> but uh, you Marte, said Mate has compis, so uh, well, no, it doesn't come with it by default. You ah. can choose to install it. Uh, um, the, the Marco now, the the window manager, does have um, some uh, rudimentary compositing capabilities, um, but none of the wobbly window stuff. <laughs> but um, Mate's really well suited for. It's much lighter than GNOME Two ever was. So one of the things that was done is all of the um, obsolete libraries from, from GNOME have been axed out and thrown away. So all of the Bonobo and Corbus stuff that we didn't need anymore and the backwards compatibility libraries to earlier versions of GNOME have all been ditched. So that helps streamline uh, the whole thing. So it's quite lightweight now. So and one I, of the things... Oh, sorry, go, go on. on. No, no, go on. <laughs> well, one of the things I did in order to get it working on Arch, because um, I knew once I got it into the official repositories, it would then flow into the um, 
Arch Linux ARM project and, and for the Raspberry Pi. So I actually built the whole thing on, on a Raspberry Pi, a cluster of two Raspberry Pis. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Um, and uh, I have a, a Raspberry Pi with a lapdoc, and I run Mate on my Raspberry Pi. And it's a, you know, it's a complete desktop, and it runs in about 100 meg of RAM, so that's not too shabby. Cool. So uh, on, the, on the scale of, um, in, in my mind, I have um, a scale of like heavyweight desktops down to the, the lighter weight ones. And in my mind, I'm seeing Ubuntu and Kubuntu you know, in the, in the heavy area. You mean and Unity then, and KDE? Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, and then XFCE and LXDE as you come down and Openbox. Where, where do you see Marte fit in that kind of stack? Well, I can tell you exactly because a couple of weeks ago, <laughs> I actually got goaded into researching this some, by, by some of the Arch Linux developers because they were saying, this is an interesting idea. So I'm just just looking for my article now. And it's memory consumption of Linux desktop environments. And I conducted this test on um, Arch Linux, uh, given that's what I do. Uh, and it came out like this. Uh, LXDE uh, was running a full system in 84.9 meg. Enlightenment, uh, 0.18 in 89 meg. XFCE, 4.10 in 105 meg. Huh. Mate, 1.8 in 121 meg. Ooh. Uh, Cinnamon 2.0.14 at the time in 167 meg, GNOME 3.10 in 256 meg, and KDE 4.12 in 358 meg. Wow. Have you uh, published the these results on a blog or something? So that yeah, yeah, they're on my, on my site, yeah. Cool. Yeah, I, th- I thought I'd seen these, which is kind of why I alluded to it. <laughs> it's it's yeah. fascinating. I, I, I didn't realise there was so much work going into, uh, into Mate and... Um, Unfortunately, we've we've run out of time. So, is okay. there any way if if people want to find out more or get involved in the project, uh, where can they where can they get yes. involved? Yes, uh, the website is mate desktop dot org, and you'll find a wiki and a blog, and links to all of the community references there. Uh, the best place to get in touch with the developers if you want to contribute is in hash mate mate m a t e <laughs> on Freenode, uh, and we're all very friendly and quite welcoming couple of things i'd just like to mention very quickly sure it's not just a static thing it's not like how gnome 2 used to be each release has a lo- load of incremental improvements and right. fixes um so new features have been added but they're not massive changes they're li- little tweaks and improvements um because we don't we don't like being changed do we no newer <laughs> technologies are being supported all the time so system d support upal one empre stuff like that Awesome. And one of the big things we did recently is we were approached by the uh, Talking Arch and Sonar teams. They're responsible for preparing distributions for um, visually impaired and blind individuals. And they said Mate was the most accessible desktop, mm. but there are a couple of bugs and features that they needed. So in Mate 1.81, we, we put some effort in to fix most of their issues, and they're now producing uh, distributions around Mate for the uh, visually impaired community, which cool. is pretty brilliant. Yeah, that's very admirable. Awesome. Excellent. Well, we need to uh, wrap it up there. So thank you very much indeed for your time. Um, we hope to uh, speak to you again, maybe in the future, with further developments about the Mate project or the Mate project. <laughs> <laughs> Love Love to. Thank, thank you. you, Martin. Cheers, Cheers. Martin. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. It's time now for some gooey love, and the person who has contributed the gooey love this week is Mark, it says here, um, and this is something to do with um, closing tabs in Firefox. You know what happens when you close a tab and you think, oh, I didn't mean to close that tab. How can I rectify this problem? There's well, a solution. If only, uh, if only you could undo the closing of the tab. Yeah, if only I could reopen the tab that I just accidentally closed because I am ham, a ham-fisted bun vendor <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> Don't have lady fingers. Who, so <laughs> I, <laughs> Sorry, a ham-fisted what? <laughs> bun, bun vendor. doesn't matter. Um, so let's say you've closed wow. the tab by accident. How can you put that right? Mark. <laughs> what, why are you eating cake while you're supposed to be doing a podcast? <laughs> it said this bit was by Tony, so I thought I would need to. <laughs> <laughs> so you're shoveling cake in your mouth. <sighs> oh, damn it.
Right. But see, we, d- we really, really do eat cake and if, drink if tea. If Alan had been quicker with the tea, I would have eaten it by now. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very rich cake. I need to wash it down. Hold on. Oh, gosh. So <laughs> now you get a slurp. I'm going to fade his microphone down. <laughs> So there is a shortcut, a keyboard shortcut, to reopen your most recently closed tab in Firefox. Is that the message? Um, yes. Okay. Um, there's also, you can do, is it Control-Shift-T? Yes. Control-Shift-T, I think, works in Firefox and Chrome, at least. And you can also right-click on the tab bar and okay. say, and there should be a menu option to undo close tab. Yes. And you can repeatedly do it as well. If, oh, yeah. I, if you've like closed 10 tabs in a fit yeah. of peak, you can do control shift T repeatedly to bring them all back again one by one. Yeah. Oh, that's very useful. Yeah, yes. I do often close the wrong tab. I think, yeah. oh, I shouldn't have closed that tab. And the best yes. I could do is go back to recently closed tabs. But even that I've only started using recently. I think in the past I just kind of wrote it off. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's gone. It's lost to the yeah, internet but forever. I, this was brilliant shortcut. Excellent. Well, thank you very much indeed, Mark. That was a superlative gooey love. <laughs> Back and, to your cake. I think we all benefited from that. Good. <laughs> Lovely. Mark, tell us what's <laughs> been going on in the feedback world. Um, I, Put that I will. cake down. Uh, um, okay, well... Um, Tor, via the blog, said, I enjoyed the interview with the Document Foundation guys, but where were the jellyfish in this episode? What? Mm. It was The episode was called The One with the Jellyfish. Yeah. Ah. It's a mystery. It's a it mystery. It will remain a yes. mystery. If right. You, if you, if you, if you know, Care. Our, our names have a thing, and, and <laughs> there's a thing this, this time which is different to the thing that's last time, so have fun working out. Why? Before. Cake makes Mark's brain go funny. <laughs> he does. I, I was trying to be cryptic. Ooh. You were. Like, a, like, <laughs> yes. like yes. a stolen eBay password. <laughs> uh, Luke Ipercil? 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 Stop. Something like that. This is ironic. Uh, <laughs> he says, uh, love the shout out. Thanks. Got the last name pretty close. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Not this time. Do <laughs> indeed. Uh, John Spriggs says, Recently I've been teaching myself Docker and today, Tuesday the 27th, became a dad again to my daughter Emily. Hooray, this is John Aww. John the nice guy Spriggs. Who is a very, very nice guy. Yes. He I got in touch with us on Twitter. See the connection be- between the two halves of that sentence. Um, and we asked what, what he'd been doing, I think. Or yeah. what, we asked people to tell us what they've been doing. Ah, yeah, cool. And that's what he's been doing. Yeah, maybe it was a very long labour and he had time to learn some software while he was waiting. No, I think Docker's pretty easy to learn. Oh, okay. (laughs) Now he's shoveling cake in their face. That's true. (laughs) I hide it well. (laughs) And finally... I'm very experienced at cake eating. (laughs) I can see. (laughs) (laughs) And finally, while we've been on air, we talked about my uh, Malawi mission um, at the beginning of the show. And while we've been on air, three people have donated. Um, So Super Engineer, my name is Hoggle, and Stefan66 have all donated who they're listening live in the RC channel now so thank you very much uh, all three of you for donating it really does mean a lot I now only have £35 to go so Ooh. it's very very close it's very very exciting I am quite excited <laughs> that I you know I might actually have to go and climb a mountain I might have, oh, I have to go and do some training or something aren't I you're yes. going to get bitten to death yeah Right, okay, right, anyway, if, thank if you, you very much. If you want to hear much. funny stories about Tony being bitten by insects, then donate £35 now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> get on with it. Um, so, yeah, that's all of your feedback. The Ubuntu Podcast needs you. Yes, you. If you hear something that enthralls, exasperates, or elevates you, tweet at UUPC or email podcast at ubuntu-uk.org. You can also talk to us on the telephone, Skype, Facebook, and Google+. Find links to all these places on our website, podcast.ubuntu-uk.org. Please do get in touch. I mean it. Just one message. Just to know there's someone out there who cares. And the next live show will be on Wednesday the 11th of June at half past eight. Cool. In the evening. 
in the evening in <laughs> look, British summer time. Look, look at the calendar on the website, and there's also a countdown. <laughs> it tells is that, you. Is that broken, or no, does that it work? it works. Okay. It always works. It works. <laughs> except <laughs> sometimes. Except the bits when it didn't unless, work. Unless, unless someone else doesn't do what they were supposed to do, it works. Which is put the event in the calendar. Exactly. Right. Yeah. yeah, I think they're done for most of the rest of the season. So, but um, not all. <laughs> yes. If um, any of you have any feedback or suggestions for people we should interview or mm. suggestions for segments, yes. do or get if in you'd touch. Like us to talk to you about something. Yes, yes. If you've got a cool project you want to share. Mm. Yeah, we've had a really good run of interviews this season so yep. far. I think yeah. everybody we've spoken to has been really interesting, and we've had one pretty much every other show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We've got um, one lined up for the next time. Okay, cool. but we're, so we'll be looking for people who might want to be interviewed. What from the end of July onwards? And it doesn't it doesn't have to be like one of the massive projects. It can be a small project as long as it's kind of interesting and there there's a benefit to it yep. in some way end yeah. of june end of june onwards end of june onwards excellent so uh, if you have got a project and you'd like to talk about it drop us a line podcast at ubuntu-uk.org any bets whether we'll be talking about x prize in the future no no never as uh, rick spencer said when uh, when jono left you're dead to me <laughs> <laughs> uh, we love you thanks for listening everybody Bye-bye. bye bye